Uh, welcome to Covenant. First of all, let me just say happy Valentine's Day to all of you. And those of you who have loved ones and someone special, I hope you have done something special for them, even if it was coming to church with them today. Amen? And look, we got a new Valentine in church today. Hold that baby up. Look up there. First Sunday for Amelia Grace in church today. We're so glad to have our new baby in church today. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, let me just uh, remind you of some things coming up this week. First of all, on Wednesday night, we'll have a usual lineup, uh, starting with dinner at 6, and then at 6.30, there will be intercessory prayer in the, in the uh, pastor study, and then on uh, Wednesday night at 7, we will assemble back here and I'll continue the series that I've been doing called uh, Secrets of Building a Healthy Relationship. And this week is a good one for the come right after uh, Valentine's Day and it's called The Secret of Kindness. Amen? Uh, I know you love that special thing beside you, but you need to learn how to be kind to them too. Amen? And so we want you to come and, and let's talk about The Secret of Kindness. Fire rehearsal on Thursday night and then Friday night, we're going to be having family game night. And so bring your favorite snack. Uh, we will have some cheetahs up there to play. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if, you've never played, if you've never played Mexican train uh, dominoes with those two, it's quite an event. Uh, I love it. Anyway, sit to the right, uh, sit to the left of them, or else they will do you in. But anyway, uh, we invite you to come and, and, and bring your favorite snack, and let's just have a good time with uh, family game night. And uh, Saturday will be uh, Covenant Transgender Ministry Outreach in Danko Hall at 4 o'clock. Then on Sunday, a special day, a special day, all day is a special day, uh, we're going to be having our 35th anniversary as a congregation. Our 35th anniversary, and... Um, and so we're going to be having a special guest, the Reverend Dr. Wendy Coleman, uh, who's pastor of First Congregational Christian Church, United Church of Christ in Montgomery, will be here. She will be our speaker that morning. Immediately after the service, we'll be having a sit-down dinner in the fellowship hall. And for the overflow, we'll also be using the teen space downstairs uh, for the overflow on that. And then... Uh, at 6 o'clock, we're going to be having Jason and DeMarco and their twins will be here in, in a concert and a, slight a, a small reception after that. So it's going to be a, a full day of wonderful activity of celebrating our 35th anniversary as a congregation. And so bring a friend, tell someone about it, and let's have a wonderful, wonderful time. Amen? Uh, I think uh, Sister had an announcement here. Let's see which one of these work and which one doesn't. Good morning. That one works, I guess. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, 3H, uh, which is Happy Helping Hands, um, this year we've been working on our project. Um, this, uh, our first project will be a Bible drive. And what we plan to do is to donate 25 Bibles to um, Golden Living Center. Uh, it's a senior citizen's home um, in River Chase. And we've uh, allocated five of each type of Bibles. And uh, in the foyer, there's a display to show each type of Bible. So if you plan to participate, and I feel in my spirit you will, um, you will pick, pick a, book, a bookmark out of the display. And uh, on the bookmark, there is a tag. And on the back of the tag, one side of the tag tells you the type of Bible that you're donating or purchasing, and the other side is where you will indicate whether you're donating um, monetarily or you're purchasing the Bible yourself. Once you do that, you'll flip the bookmark over and just show the white side on the display so we'll know that that Bible has been committed to be purchased or donate um, monetarily. Now, the Bibles, we, some have done research on the Bible cost, so between 5 to $20. $20 is very high end. $5, we can still get a Bible. So if you plan to donate monetarily, um, you can do that. Yes, large print Bible. Amen. So if you purchase the Bibles, this is going to a senior citizen's home, so <laughs> large print Bibles, please. Um, but if you have any questions, you can um, talk to me or any 3-H member, 
um, their rounds. And also, I want to um, preemptively tell you about some of our other projects. We're, we're going to have a hygiene pack um, drive where we're going to um, pack hygiene products for the homeless. We're also going to do the um, GBM um, staple supplies. We'll do that continually throughout the year. And this summer, we'll also participate in their lunch program for the kids. Um, one of our biggest projects is going to be a community garden. So if you guys, anyone that's um, interested in doing gardening or has a green thumb or just want to volunteer picking weeds, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but that's going to be a huge project for us. Um, it's going to kind of be headed by John Martinez. Raise your hand. And Susan Carroll. So if you have any ideas or anything about that, this, I think that's going to be a, an awesome opportunity for us because we can use that produce for Wednesday night supper. We can also donate to GBM with that. It'll keep giving. So um, hopefully that'll flourish. We're just going to kind of do a starter kit this year and then grow it from there. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Many wonderful opportunities for you to uh, give to benefit someone else. You know, we always teach that if God has blessed you, it's just so that you can be a blessing to someone else. And so the Happy Helping Hands, the 3H Happy Helping Hands is a wonderful opportunity for you to do that. I want to remind you, the board meeting is coming up on February 23rd. It's an open board meeting. In Danko Hall, you're invited to come and be a, uh, uh, participate in that. Also, uh, want you to know uh, that our board member on duty today is uh, Frank Dotson, right there. Our staff person on duty is Deacon Jeanette Horn, and uh, and Children's Church will be led by uh, Deacon uh, Pam, um, Deacon Patricia Steele. Uh, want to say that uh, bo most of you know that Joe and Bo and his grandson have had some health setbacks, but both of them received uh, great doctor's reports recently. So we thank God for both of them, Grayson and Joe. And I want to say thank you uh, for everyone who shifted around and covered for me this week, uh, this past Wednesday. I went to Hartsville, Hartford, uh, uh, Alabama to, uh, to feel our pianist's uh, mother's funeral. And and he'll be back next week, but he wanted to be with his father this first Sunday after his mother's death. And I told him, I think that's the right thing to do. And, uh, and so uh, thank you, Daryl, and, 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 and all of you who have stepped in the gap during this time. Uh, it's, it's a tremendous th loss to lose your mom. And so we want to thank everybody for stepping in the gap to do that. Um, also, birthdays this week. Rob's birthday is on the 19th, Felicia McKenzie's birthday is the 20th, and Demilia Ray's birthday is the 20th. Let's wish them all happy birthday. And we want to say thanks, thank you to Ron Prescott, Todd Field, Jim Ball, and Ben Garrett for the fantastic dinner this past Wednesday night. And we also want to say thank you to all of our deacons, past and present, who worked so hard uh, uh, to serve this church. We thank God for your ministries. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us rise and greet one another in peace.
Good morning. Please rise in spirit and stand as you're able for our processional hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Christ, who has made us all brothers and sisters by his loving grace, please join me in praying our prayer of invocation. Loving God, with the blessed assurance of your presence, we welcome you into our worship. On this first Sunday in Lent, open our hearts and minds to the truth of your great love and salvation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We like to remind you at the beginning of the service that no matter who you are, where you're on life's journey, or who you love, you're welcome here. That's because we're the people of God who live as the people of hope. Therefore, let us declare it so this morning in our covenant affirmation. I am a child of God. I celebrate God's Holy Spirit coming into my life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I accept God's Spirit and power to inspire me, guide me, and motivate me 
to be a witness of the gospel, offering hope, showing faithfulness, and sharing joy. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated, and then as you're being seated with the children, meet their teacher at the center arm. our prayer book, kept on the pedestal outside the Friends of Dorothy Welcome Center as you come through the front doors of the church. In it are the prayer requests and the praise reports of our people. On Wednesday night, there's a group of us that meet in the pastor's study. By then, our prayer ministers, Jamie, either Jamie or Judy, will have put them all together on a list. And not just these, all that come in by the internet, phone, word of mouth, however we get them. And at that time, we uh, lift them individually before, before the throne of grace. And we don't just stop there. We take them with us and we pray over them the rest of the week. Perhaps you had a, you didn't have an opportunity to make your prayer request known. Maybe yours is deeply personal and you'd just like for us to remember it as an unspoken request, which is so signified by the raising of your hand. Let me just um, say something that's on my heart this morning. This has been an interesting week. Um, 26 years ago on Friday morning, 8.22, my mom went home to be with the Lord. And it was interesting that this week, on Wednesday, I traveled to Hartsville, Hart, Alabama, to he was Field and his family for his mom's funeral. And then yesterday, I had to preach Chris, Chris Black's mother's funeral up in Gardendale. It's been one of those weeks, you know what I mean? And so my heart's heavy for those who have lost their moms. And for whom this is a particular difficult time. Like our sister here. So I just want us to remember Mark those who have lost their moms this morning. I also want us to remember another mom, if you'll come down, Deacons, uh, whose mom had to be rushed back to the hospital this yesterday. Uh, Susan's mom, her partner's mom, Deacon Susan's mom. Fanny's back over, they had to rush her back. They're not sure whether it was a heart issue. Or, many of you know that she's suffering from cancer. And uh, so we want to remember her this morning. And so on behalf of Fanny Cosby, Cosby, I anoint you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and, uh, and I'm going to anoint you on behalf of uh, Shirley Lambert, uh, a former pastor of this church, Marjorie Goner's spouse, has uh, been uh, diagnosed with another kind of cancer, and uh, it's aggressive. And we want to lift up Shirley, we want to lift up Marge as uh, they go through this very difficult time as well. If you feel that, would you just stretch forth your hands? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. 
As the deer pants for the water, so our soul longs for you. And God, this morning we long for you on behalf of those who are going through some difficult times. God, we long for you on behalf of those who've lost moms. We long for you on behalf of those whose moms are fighting battles and struggling with cancer. And so God, right now we lift up Fanny in that hospital right now in Grandview. We know that you've been with her all this time. And so God, we, be, we pray that you'd be with Susan. We pray that you'd be with all those uh, sisters and, and especially that mom as they go through this difficult time. Let your nurturing spirit just let them know that your presence is there no matter what. God, we lift up Shirley this morning, Lambert, and we lift up Marge Ragona, Lord, Reverend Marge Ragona. We pray that you would be with them as they fight, face this difficult challenge ahead of them. And God, not just them, we pray that you would just wrap them in your love and cradle them in your care. And God, whatever other needs are me, uh, uh, you need to meet this morning, we lift them to you. We trust and we believe your word tells us that we, you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask of faith. And so this morning, God, we lift them up to you. And we lift up the people of this congregation. We lift up all those that are troubled in body and spirit. We lift up the concerns of our community. We lift up the world and its leaders. God, we lift up Justice Scalia's family as they face his death. And God, we ask that you would be with your church and its leaders and its members and its mission. For we pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Let's just worship the Lord this morning. Aren't you more than gold or silver only? You can satisfy. You Our New Testament reading today comes from Romans 10, verses 8b through 13. The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between a Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Spirit and stand as you are able for the good news which comes from the Gospel of Luke 4 verses 1 through 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, 
I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. That little course almost summarizes the sermon today. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Today is Valentine's Day, and I hope, as I said earlier, if you have a special someone, you have recognized them and given them a special Valentine. Today is also the first Sunday in Lent, that's why you see so many people wearing purple. It's because here at Covenant, it's what? Purple Sunday. Purple is the liturgical color for the season of Lent. It's sort of a special color for our community. And uh, <clears throat> notice that I said that this is the first day in Lent. First Sunday in Lent and not of Lent. And why did I say that? Because Lent is the 40 days between Ash Wednesday 
and Easter. If you count them, it's 46. Why? Because Sundays are not considered part of Lent. And so we, say, we don't say in Lent, we say of Lent. And the reason is because Sunday is feast day. Even during Lent, you don't celebrate, uh, you don't do whatever you're doing for Lent on that day. If you were fasting for Lent, you wouldn't fast on Sunday. Thank God, I'd starve to death. <laughs> because that's considered a feast day. You get to eat on that day. Amen? Amen. And you wouldn't even be breaking your Lenten fast. Lent is also a spiritual, but it's also a practical journey in which we intentionally take the time to concentrate on learning how to live out the two great commandments as they are identified by Jesus, which was love God and love your neighbor. And as such, prayer, confession, and seeking forgiveness for sin, giving up of ourselves and our resources to, to help others, seeking to be reconciled with God, even self-denial, uh, you know, giving up some special favorite indulgence. All of that's part of this concentrated effort of trying to get your maximum results from a Lenten journey. And so on this, purp on this Purple Sunday, we're faced with two scriptures Two passages of scripture that the lectioner assigns for this day that help us to make the most of our Lenten journey. A time of reflection and a time of doing those things that deepen our faith and draw us closer to God. And so briefly this morning, I want us to look at those two passages of scripture. And I want us to think about all of that in this sermon that I'm calling on our lips. And in your hearts, on our lips and in our hearts. Let us pray. God, we do thank you that we know that you love us. The Bible tells us so. And this morning, God, your word tells us some other things that we need to hear as we embark on this Lenten journey. And so this morning, Lord, let me make it very simple for these, your people, that they can grasp it, they can receive it, they can uh, understand it, and really know how good you really are to us. Well, we pray it in Jesus' name, and all God's children said, amen. amen and amen. On our lips and in our hearts. The emphasis of the sermon today is really very simple. It's really simple, and it really comes from Romans chapter 10. The epistle reading that was read to you this morning by Luana. But to get to it, I want to share an event that happened to me uh, last Sunday uh, that made the gospel text this week become the living word. Now, as I've told you before, I usually ahead of time will just glance through all the scriptures that are signed for the lectionary uh, for a season. And so I did this probably back in the uh, middle of January. I just looked at all the scriptures, but I don't really give much attention to them a full concentration to them until the Monday before they are assigned for the following Sunday. So I wasn't thinking about the gospel text today when last Sunday, uh, where is Mother Battles? She's gone now. Anyway, Mother Battles called me in the evening and asked me, you want to go grab a bite to eat with him and Justin that evening? And so on the way to the restaurant, I don't even know how we got to the subject, but we were talking about prayer. And I said to them, I said, have you ever been praying? And I don't know where. This weird thought just runs through your mind. And you think, where did that come from? How could I be thinking something like that in prayer? And of course, both of them said, yes. I've had, that's happened to me many times. And so I told them, I said, well, and one of them was upset. Justin was upset because that had happened to him. That happens to him on a regular basis. And, and, uh, and I said to him, I said, well, you can't help what runs through your mind. You don't have any control over that. What you do have control over, though, 
It's the thoughts that you allow to dwell in your mind and obsess over. And I used a little analogy that I may have used here on Sunday morning. I know I've used it on Wednesday night several times in the life lesson. And that is, I told them, I said, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head. But you can keep it from building a nest in your head. If you got hurt. And so Justin said, he was sure glad to hear that because that happens to him so many times. And he, and he went on to say, while I, he's not suicidal, you know, there are times in your life you feel down, times you feel a bit depressed. And he says, and when he's down and depressed, and sometimes he's had these weird thoughts, like a suicidal thought, just run through his mind. He's, I'm not going to kill myself, but it runs through my mind and while I'm praying, even. And uh, he says that what happens next when that happens is all that Church of Christ background of his begin to kick in, and all that legalistic teaching that he heard growing up in church began to surface, and he finds himself thinking, he's going to hell for thinking like that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I see you do. And I said to him, well, the scripture said that Jesus was tempted in every way we are, yet without sin. In order to be tempted, you have to think about the temptation. If you don't think about it, it ain't a temptation. And I went on to say, since Jesus didn't sin, evidently, just thinking about a temptation is not sin. As a matter of fact, Jesus even was tempted to suicide. And I didn't, I wouldn't think about this, the lesson this morning, but this lesson is it. That last temptation of the devil was an invitation, a temptation to suicide. Throw yourself off the top of this temple. Jesus was being tempted by suicide. So thinking about it is not a sin. Let's get that on the table first. That right there could set some of you free for another 10 years. Just thinking about a temptation is not sin. Amen? And I went on to tell him, uh, it's when you get, begin to give home to that thought. And you begin to let it percolate in your mind. And you begin to obsess over it in your heart to the point where it begins to control your actions. Then it's a sin. Amen. Now, I don't ever remember thinking of this passage from Luke 4 as Jesus having a suicidal thought. But that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Jesus was tempted to suicide. Did you notice how he handled it, though? He gave us the key to how to handle these thoughts, these temptations, these thoughts of temptation when you're trying to be tempted. Jesus just used the Word of God. That's why you all know the Word of God. That's why you all studied your Bible. The good reason to study your Bible. Look at how Jesus did it. <laughs> when he was tempted to Turn the stones into bread. He said, it's written. Man don't live by bread alone. He used the word of God. When he was tempted to seek glorification, he said, it's written. You don't tempt the Lord your God. When he's tempted to suicide, he says, it's written. You don't put the Lord to the test. If I go up here on this roof, which I ain't. <laughs> Let's put that on the board first. And throw myself off of that steeple, expecting the Lord's angels to catch me. Who's going to be surprised? <laughs> all of this is going to be splat all over the ground. And it will not have to be in the paper tomorrow. The Lord threw him to the ground. Stupid jumped. <laughs> Amen? So I can't blame it on the Lord, right? And so what I'm trying to tell you is that there's so many things we learn growing up in church just ain't so. We've been taught that if you think them, it's evil. How can you be tempted unless you think it? Amen? And what was so evident for me from that conversation uh, that I had with them was how much God loves me. That God even endured every temptation that I will ever face 
just to let me know that God will, will help me out when I'm going through it. And as I said in the note from Pastor J.R. this week, this is made clear in the 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. When Paul writes, no temptation, no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to humanity. What is he saying right there? He's saying that in other words, you're never going to face any kind of new temptation that nobody else has faced. You're never going to be a, get, a, a, have a surprise for the Almighty. Amen? Anything that you are tempted with, somebody else has done it before you. And if nobody else has done it, Jesus has. He experienced it when he's on earth. Here's the good news, the rest of that verse. And God is faithful. And God is faithful. God will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to bear it. But when you're tempted, God will provide you a way out so that you can endure. As I also said in the note from Pastor J.R. this week, uh, as a matter of fact, it was one of the, I usually don't get a lot of responses from the Pastor J. Got a lot, unusual high number of responses this week. And I said, when I read these passages, I don't see a mean, angry God out to get me. I see a very loving God who wants what's best for me. I see a loving God who's willing to do whatever is necessary to help me. I see a God who knows my very frail human self, know that I'm very prone towards things that are not good for me. Amen? Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so this God, this Jesus, walked among us as a full human, and he went through all those temptations that I'm going through, that I'm tempted with, just to demonstrate to me that I can overcome it. Now, it says that he was without sin. J.R. is not. And neither are you. Let's put that on the table too. So what does it have to do with on our lips and in our hearts? Here it is. You see that same guilt and condemnation that Justin had experienced. With having, just having a thought, a past thought, a fleeting thought of suicide. That guilt and condemnation from all those little legalisms that came then that condemned him we have also around the issue of salvation <laughs> we have those same old guilt and condemnation around our salvation and what happens is that in churches that we grew up often they said the right words oh it's all about grace but then they spend a lot of time beating the hell out of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. They spent an awful lot of time trying to make you live under Old Testament laws and all these legalism, every legalism they could find in the Bible. They teach you that salvation is by, in Jesus Christ, is by confessing with your lips and believing in your heart. And that's true. If they don't only stop there. But they don't. They start systematically adding stuff to you. And if you don't look like them, and if you don't act the way they think you ought to act, if, they don't, if you don't measure up to their definition of a Christian, then they add stuff on. Then you have, it's, it's grace plus whatever they tell you you got to do. Amen. Anybody been in a church that did that? And Paul tells us in the scripture this morning, it just ain't true. This scripture is so clear you almost don't have to explain it. It is so clear you don't have to explain it. It don't even need my commentary, but because you pay me, I give you a commentary. <laughs> Listen to the scripture again. Romans 10. The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That's the word of faith we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips 
that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's pretty clear, isn't it? But it doesn't stop there. He says, for one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the lip and so is saved. The scripture says, no one. Say no one. No one. No one who believes in him will be put to shame. I didn't make it up. It's in the book right there. And then he says, well, there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. That, that, when he says that, he's talking about a dividing line between races, between classes, between all these things that we, we you know, all these differences. That's what he's trying to say. There. There's no difference here, no matter who you are. And so he's saying here, there's no difference between Jew or Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all. Yeah. And get this, and is generous. To all who call on him. And just in case you didn't get it. He says for everyone. Who calls on the name of the Lord. Will. Be. Saved. As you can see this epistle. Is all about. Lips. And heart. It almost sounds more like a Valentine theme than the first Sunday in Lent. Just happened that both of them happened to be on the same day this year. So think of it this way. This passage of scripture today is God's Valentine to you. And God is asking you to allow him to be your Valentine forever. Amen? Or to put it this way, I also said in a note from Pastor J.R. this week, I think the key to a spiritually enriching and meaningful Lenten journey begins with knowing without a doubt that God is not out to get you. And God has made this really easy for us to know. And even if, it, even if it's often been hid by the manner in which it's been presented from pulpit, the fact is we don't have to jump through all kinds of hoops. We simply have to believe it. Amen. And so the epistle text from Romans again says, for it is with the heart that you believe and are justified. It's with the mouth that you profess faith and are saved. And anyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. It's just that simple. Lips and heart. <laughs> and yet, Paul reminds us that as Christians, our lips and our hearts are to be used to take the gospel message to our community. Too many people have Christ in their heart, but don't have it on the lips. Amen? Amen. God wants it to be both places. Because somebody's going to hear the words on your lip that need to hear it. Others are going to see the actions stemming from your heart. It doesn't make any difference with God, which it is as long as you point them to Jesus Christ. God doesn't always call us to use our mouth in evangelism. After all, Sometimes there's something to be said for being a quiet witness. St. Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel. If necessary, use words. Sometimes we share the gospel with words. Other times you share it with your heart. What do I mean by sharing it with your heart? You share it in the way you treat one another. You share it in the way you reach out to somebody. That's an action of the heart. Don't tell me how much you love me. Show me. People don't care how much you people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so that's why it takes the lips and the heart. Because if you're just talking up here and you ain't never showing it here, you can keep it. Amen.
just that simple. This morning, if like Justin, you are, you struggle with stuff from your past. You struggle with teaching that told you you had to do this in addition to all just believing and confessing. I come to tell you this morning, you need to shake it off. It ain't so. In the Gospel of John, that famous passage we're all familiar with, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He goes on to say, for God didn't send his son into the world to condemn him, but through him you may be saved. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. Paul just wraps that up in one phrase. No one who believes in him will ever be put to shame. It's as simple as confessing on the lips and believing in the heart. If you've never done that, you can do it this morning and it's done forever. If you've done it, then why don't you just rejoice and start letting go of all, everything else that you heard growing up and just hold on to that. Confess it with your mouth. Believe in your heart. You will not be put to shame. Stop feeling guilty over stuff you thought about. What you need to make sure you do, you ain't making a home for it, a nest for it. And go on. Some of you need to say to some of those things you heard growing up, it is written. I don't have to put up with this nonsense. Amen? You need to simply say, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Let's stand this in. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. for being that loving and nurturing mother to us. God, we thank you that your word is very clear to us this morning. And God, for all those who have suffered from all the legalism, have been beat up from pulpits with all this stuff that kept them from seeing your best, I pray this morning that they'll be able to say, it is written. And God, I pray that they will understand that is only on the lips and in the heart and nothing else. For we pray it in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. If you have not done so, now's the time to pass the 
sign in tablet so we can record your attendance. One of my daily devotionals this week reminded me of an old movie. JR is too young to remember it, but some of the rest of us will. <clears throat> it was about a guy who had worked 40 years as an actuary for a hotel, and he was nearing retirement. The movie starts, it's his last day. He's waiting on 5 o'clock, ready to go. <clears throat> and 5 o'clock hits, he gathers up his stuff and leaves the office, cuts off the light for the last time. You like to think that he lives happily ever after, but that wouldn't have made much of a movie. Instead, he spends the next several years pondering if his, those 40 years of work mean anything. Made me ask a couple of questions. How do I know my work means something? The money that I make means something. It does if I support my family and I support my church and make a difference. Every time the door is open for this church and people are welcomed here, your tithes and offerings make a difference. Amen. And now's the time that we can do that. Would the ushers please come forward?
God, we thank you for these tithes and offerings and bless each giver. And we thank you for this church, a welcome place for everyone to know your unconditional love. On this first Sunday in Lent, let us prepare ourselves for receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion by saying together our general confession. Let us pray. God, we confess that you call us to be a living sanctuary in your presence. Forgive us for our sins. Help us during Lent to prepare for living your love and salvation being ever present on our lips and in our hearts. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We pause now to individually confess to you, almighty God, those things which separate us from you, others, and the best in ourselves. Now let us join together and pray in the prayer that Jesus taught us praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessed assurance that Jesus is really yours is found on your lips and in your heart. Amen. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, know that God has heard your confessions and you are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Please join with me now for our liturgy of the, of the great thanksgiving. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is a right, a good, and a joyful thing to always and everywhere give thanks to you, Creator God. Therefore, we join our voices to the angels and the host of heaven forever proclaiming your glory, singing. gave us the choice to make that on our lips and in our heart. Yes. Yet Christ knew that from time to time we would need to be reminded of that. That we are truly his children. So the night that he was sharing his Passover meal with his disciples and friends, he took the bread, lifted it to heaven, gave thanks, and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. For this is my body that has been broken for each and every one of you. At the end of the meal, he took the cup of Elijah and lifted it to heaven. He blessed it and gave thanks. And he said, take and drink 
all of you. For this is the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant, given for the one and for the many. And as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you do so to recall me into your life. My brothers and sisters, if you feel so comfortable, let's stretch forth our hands as we together consecrate these elements. Dear Heavenly God, we thank you for loving us, knowing who we were, and still loving us. Thank you. We ask now that you would allow the Holy Spirit to descend upon the seed of the field and the fruit of the vine, so that they would truly become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose victoriously. And it is in his name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Let us join together now in proclaiming the mystery of our faith. it is with joy that I can tell you that here at Covenant you don't have to be a member of this church or of any church because this table was set for you. All we ask is that you come with an open heart. And this is a special time in our service. There may be someone out there that is for the first time confessing with their lips and believing in their heart. So please be mindful of those around you. There may be some of you out there that needs a special one-on-one -on -one prayer. We will have intercessors directly after the service right here in front of the altar that will be glad to pray with you in earnest. All you have to do is come. This table has made, been made ready. Come. Taste and see how good God is as the usher is direct.
celebration this morning is that great little chorus. Jesus is mine, mine, mine. You know Jesus is mine, mine, mine. Jesus is mine, mine, mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I be, I know Jesus is mine. I know Jesus is mine, mine, mine. Jesus is mine, mine, mine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I be, I know Again, I want to wish you a uh, happy Valentine. And if you don't have someone special, you can give me a Valentine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I pray that no matter where you go this week, you will remember this one thing. Don't let anybody deceive you. That is grace and something else. It's just grace. And all you have to do is confess it with the lips. Because that makes you believe it. And believe it in your heart. That lets God know. Would you repeat after me? May the Lord, May the Lord watch, between watch between me and thee, me and thee while we're absent, one from the other. Amen. Amen. 